Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about pouring concrete in cold weather. And what happened was this morning when we got here, this is what it was doing. It was spitting snow out. It was about 29 degrees outside. It was just under 30. So the temperatures were below freezing and we had to pour this concrete floor. So one good thing was one, you know, one, one of the things you got to do is you got to protect the sub base and that's what these concrete insulating blankets do. So these are key if you're pouring in cold weather. You don't want to be pouring on a fro frozen sub base or even a sub base that's, that's ice cold or cold to touch. So I'm sure this sub base was a little cool to touch, but it definitely wasn't frozen. And that's going to be a, a big bonus when it comes to the setting time for your concrete. So... If you guys want some of these blankets, I'll have a link for them down in the description of the of the video down below. So if you guys are new here, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. Uh, I specialize in all kinds of concrete flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification. Also, I come out with a, a couple videos a week, so you'll be updated whenever I come out with a new video. So when we get there in the morning, you know, hopefully the general contractor has the sub base all covered, which in this case they did. So we get there and we'll just pull the blankets off and save them for later because we're going to have to put them back on the floor after we get done this afternoon. So that's tip number one, you know, always protect the sub base. And then number two is... You know, I when I order my concrete, I order a 4,000 PSI mix, so I got more cement in it. That's going to help it dry better. And we always have uh, hot water in the mix, too. So this has 120 degree water in the mix. And then what we're doing is we're adding some calcium chloride. We got the calcium chloride is just an accelerator, so that's going to help the concrete dry even faster. So the combination of using a 4,000 PSI mix, uh, having warm or hot water in the concrete, and then using calcium chloride, that's going to get your concrete to dry for you guys, when, especially when the temperatures are below freezing. This is the formula that we use pretty much every day in the winter, and uh, it's worked real good for us. So we're going to show you how we do that and how this stuff dries today. You know, we got another decision to make later on, uh, coming up towards the end of the video, I'll talk to you about that, about how we're going to finish this thing. So, but for right now, we got to get this down, and you can see the steam. I don't know if you can you see the steam coming off the concrete. That that concrete is really really warm. So, we got a limited amount of time to play with this stuff. So we got to get it spread out, screeded, and bull floated before it starts setting up on us. So, we got two six yard loads coming here. And we put, we put about a bag and a half, a bag is 50 pounds, so we put about a bag and a half of that calcium chloride in it. And if anything over, you know, if it would have been 8, 9, 10 yards, we would have put two bags in. But we only had six. Well, a bag and a half is plenty of calcium for that, as long as you have that warm water in there. If you don't have, if you still have cold water pouring in the winter, guys, I'd... Man, I don't know. I'd look for another concrete company, maybe. But uh, they all should have warm water in the, uh, these states that have winters like we do here in Maine. So we're getting this stuff pulled out. I'm over there magging edges. You know, we want to be as close to screeding this stuff as we can when these guys get this truck emptied. We'll empty the six yards right out, get him out of there so we can get the second truck in. Typically what we want is just before we get done emptying this guy out, we want the second guy mixing up and have his chutes on and be ready to back right in. So when we get done screeding this first truck, two guys can start dumping that second one while one guy bull floats. This job, the, it was really tight coming down this driveway, so the second truck had to wait out by the road. So we're going to have a little bit of lag time in between the two loads. You can see that steam coming off. Again, it's about 28, 29 degrees out this morning. Um, yeah, you want to wash your tools when you're done too. Or the concrete's going to freeze right to your tools. We're lucky the, the batch man we use here, he, uh, he, he really likes his hot water. So 
he doesn't mind getting it really good in hot water for us and that helps clean the tools too but the main thing it does is it it really helps the concrete initially dry fast now once you get the concrete laid out and spread out like this you know it's starting to lose temperature that concrete temperature is about 68 to 70 degrees right now <clears throat> and it's going to go down pretty quick once it hits that that cool dirt that cool sub base now if you're pouring right on styrofoam you can see they put two feet of styrofoam around the inside edge of this that's going to help hold the the heat in the concrete a little better so if this whole thing had styrofoam under it it would even dry faster than uh, if it just has gravel under it all right so we're getting our wet pad struck there and then we'll get those two bays screeded, get them both loaded, and get the second truck on the way. Again, I mean, we're, we're working, we're hustling to get this down. We don't want to wait too long. We don't want to take our time. We want to make sure we get it down before it starts to stiffen up. We've had them dry so fast that it's really difficult to screed. The concrete's stiffening up and you know that's no fun so we're, we're pretty used to how fast this stuff sets up because we use it every day but if you don't if you don't use it every day this type of formula then you know just take my word for it you want to hustle and get it down this garage this is about a 30 by 30 garage it's about four to four and a half inches thick we got fiber mesh in the concrete. Again, it's a 4,000 PSI mix with fiber mesh. Um, that's that's just what the GC wanted. He didn't want any wire in it. He didn't want any rebar in it. I don't control that part. You know, I just get hired to pour and finish the concrete. So if that's what they want for a mix, then that's what I order for a mix. We don't typically have any trouble with this either. I mean, we saw control joints in it, so we and it's you know the excavator does a really good job installing the gravel compacting it and being inside a foundation inside a frost wall like this that floor is not going to go anywhere so luke's finishing up the bow floating that first truck's washing up and then he's going to get out of the way so that second truck can back in and then we'll get him mixed up also typically we like to be dumping that second truck right now getting it down but there just wasn't room in there for them. You can see that we had all, remember we had all those blankets on the sub base and that plastic was on top of the blankets because it, it rained the night before. So it was freezing rain. There was a lot of ice on top of those, on top of that plastic we had to take off. Um, so that's a mess. I'll show you that in a minute here. That's on the outside of that foundation. So here's the second batch of calcium going in. There's a 50 pound bag and then I got two partial bags there that, that just about add up to a bag, probably about another three quarters of a bag right there. So he's got a six yard load on. Yeah, there's some ice right there. That's what it was like this morning. Everything was icy, frozen, except for that water right there. That was underneath those blankets. We'll force that water out as we pour the concrete in there. This is all the ice that we took off that plastic. And that never melted all day long. That stayed there all day long, even after the sun came up. We put that calcium in there and we let it mix up for, you know, a good two, three or four minutes. And that, along with that hot water, that 120 degree water in there, that's uh, that's going to get this stuff drying pretty quick. So we're going to get this second truck dumped out. You can see all the steam coming off that concrete. 
this 4000 PSI mix, this is a really creamy mix too. It's good. It's a good mix to work with. We typically would pour about a 3500 mix for for our concrete floors this time of year, but because it was below freezing when we showed up, we added a little more cement to it. The cement, you know, mixed with water that that creates heat when heat of hydration when this stuff starts drying. So the the concrete itself creates a little bit of heat as it dries and the more cement you have in it the more heat it's going to create so that's why we bumped up the cement a little bit see the concrete driver is giving us some water there to mix our to wash our tools with later on that's good hot water too that won't get that won't get cold that'll stay warm all day like that So we're going to strike this doorway off to make sure it's nice and nice and level and flat in front of that doorway. And then we'll get screed in this, this bay down. See Luke's getting a little warm there. He's got to get that sweatshirt off. That's about, that's the good thing about working. Staying busy is you, you know, you don't get cold. If you're just standing around, it's kind of windy out today too, so that wind was kind of chilly if you're just standing there. So stay tuned coming up towards towards the end here. I'm going to show you, you know, what we decided to do to finish this thing. If we power trialed it, if we finished it by hand or what we did. That's coming up real soon. We'll get this last bay down. We need a little bit more concrete in there. And we'll get it screeded off. Then we'll we'll finish bull floating this half. And then what we gotta do is we gotta decide once we get it bull floated, you know, the next decision is okay, how do we finish this thing? Do we do we use a power trial on it? Do we think it's gonna dry fast enough to use a power trial? Do we just finish it by hand? You know, all those that those decisions determine just what we're going to do here moving forward and that's based on you know obviously the weather is what it's based on the most the temperatures the weather what's going to happen tonight is it going to snow is it going to rain because we got to get a, a good finish on this thing and then we got to get it covered up but we also like to try to saw cut it too we don't want to just cover this thing up and not have it sawed so then we got to come back the next day and uncover it and then saw it and usually when you cover it up with those blankets and that plastic it you get a lot of condensation under there because it's so warm under those blankets from the concrete drying and then we got to cut the concrete and it's all wet and our saw isn't really made to cut wet so it makes kind of a mess so we like to try to get it sawed the same day if we can so we'll get this thing bow floated and then uh, real quick, I'm going to show you what we decide to do as far as the finishing process. It didn't take too long after we bull floated this before we had to start finishing. It was probably, well, on this one, it was a little over an hour before we actually started finishing. So that's not too bad for a day that starts out below freezing. It never got up much higher than about 33, 34 today degrees. So it was, it stayed really cold all day, but the concrete did dry really good. We ended up getting out of here, I think all sawed and covered and everything by about 3.30 in the afternoon. So what we decided to do on the finishing part was we, we did decide to power trial it because it was drying pretty good. So we hit it. This is the third hit, so we, we floated it with the float blades, and then we kicked those float blades off, and now we're laying it down with the finish blades. So this is the second lay down with the finish blades, and then we're chasing it with the knee boards after and getting a nice smooth finish on it. So that's how we decide to finish this thing. And then after we got it knee boarded and hand wiped like this, we let it sit for about a half hour, and then we saw our expansion joints in it. And that was it, guys. That's how we finish concrete in the cold weather. That recipe works really good. We'll see you on the next video.